Uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife sequel confirmed by Sony at CinemaCon. Now, this is um, going to make... Uh, I, I thought it would make Hannah Claire very angry at first. You're doing this just no. to bait me. It, it, I wouldn't... It, if I didn't think it was important, it wouldn't be the first subject. It wouldn't be the first topic if we I talk about. Think, it's just classic excuses. Just excuses, excuses, excuses I'm on my part. I'm being tortured. Please send help. <laughs> <laughs> for anyone who's not... SOS. For anyone who's new to the podcast, I... Do not like sequels. I'm tired of them. I, I feel don't either. Like, thank you, Mary. I'm on your side. Strong, rational, bright, brilliant Mary. Right. The thing is, like, I <laughs> understand. Well, that was <laughs> laying it on thick there to get somebody to agree you with you. Are, I sure, she already before she me. said it. Mm -hmm. I'm rewarding much. her with praise for being correct. Mm -hmm. And you don't get any because you keep making me talk about sequels. I don't understand why Hollywood can't just come up with new ideas. Yeah. Like, that's all they get paid to do. And yet they're like, oh, my gosh, this made money. Let's wring its neck and try to squeeze every last drop out of it. And by doing so, ruin an entire franchise yeah. and concept. Thereby degrading the original the, source material the, the every first, time. The first two Ghostbusters movies are iconic and legendary. I, and I will see there are some series that do deserve sequels, whatever. I get it. And I actually saw this Ghostbusters movie with the like Yeah, McKenna Grace. Kids. It's fantastic. And I thought, you know, it's not it is kind of a sequel. It's an extension of this universe or the storyline. Yes. But I thought it was really good. I thought it was well done. I thought it was fresh. Yes. Stop. No. Stop there. Stop. That's enough. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. That's it. Well, we're not oh. done. So it says, when Jason Reitman brought Ghostbusters back to theaters in 2021 for Ghostbusters Afterlife, people wondered if there was going to be a one-and-done deal. Uh, I, I wasn't sure. I, I figured if it made enough money, it wouldn't be a one-and-done deal because, like uh, Hannah Claire said... Because we have to ruin good things. Hollywood. we're so greedy for money, we can't possibly profit off a new, fresh idea. Sorry, Brad. I'm really having... A hard time with this one. See, the, the problem is, uh, if if you have to pick your poison, and you either get sequels, if you're going to get sequels either way, I would rather get sequels that are good than sequels that suck. If I can't get original stuff, you what can... if we don't get sequels? What if we all stop paying for bad sequels? Yeah, what if we because don't pay taxes is... either? That's uh, uh, everybody can dream. That's uh, everyone can dream. Boo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, the Sonic. The Hedgehog sequel. Very good. That was good. And yes. I didn't see the first one. I think it's only a good sequel if you can watch it without seeing the first one and be able to like it. That's but an interesting I rubric. doubt that this is one of them. That is more true for when they make a movie adaptation of a, of a TV show. I kind of agree with Mary, but for me, my objection to sequels is that you'll have a really masterfully done movie and they are like, people responded well to it. When... You then think, ah, we could possibly make more money. You try and stretch out something that has come to a natural conclusion, mm -hmm. especially well, like stories that have a strong, uh, movies that have a strong story arc don't always like, yeah, there could be some loose ends, but there's not always enough to make something new. So you have to introduce new concepts and new people. And it just waters down and degrades the whole, the whole production with the Sonic series or with, you know, I don't know, obviously Lord of the Rings is a book that has or a book series with multiple, but when you know in advance, like I totally believe they did with Sonic, that you are going to produce multiple movies, you lay the groundwork with that from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I don't think, based on what I saw of this Ghostbusters movies, there is a need for any more, right? We got to see kind of a modern role of the Ghostbusters today. We got to say goodbye to some beloved characters and that's it. We're, we're done, right? I Please. would argue that in the case of this movie, you're probably right. That especially given the way that they did the the Harold Ramis tribute at the end, which was great, which could have been, which could have gone horribly wrong, and they but handled didn't. It beautifully. And they handled it beautifully. Uh, but what they said before was original. One of the original ideas was they wanted this to be like a franchise where there would be Ghostbusters divisions all over the country or the world, which always sounds great in theory. Like, ooh, if it's in this city, it could have unique sensibilities that are unique to this city. But it never ends up that way it always just ends up being homogenized in just the same place but with a vaguely different location well, and one of the cool things about this was like ghostbusters the originals in new york and this one was in oklahoma which people thought wouldn't work because new york was such a integral part of the right. original and movies. i thought it really they really did a great job i mean i feel I like we have covered this the ghostbuster concept now it's all over the world it's national good times yep i i could suggest to you a hundred million uh, TV shows or books that you could adapt into new movies if we still aren't going to do truly original content. But I, I am just frustrated with the repetitious 
desire to just cannibalize things that are good on their own and try to make them have these sibling movies that they don't need. Uh, to to its credit, keeping Ivan Reitman or uh, Ivan uh, to keep uh, Reitman as the director, uh, Reitman's son as the director, uh, at least lends some credibility that it could come across at least somewhat better than the other ones. But I agree that I don't think it really needs to be made. Uh, I do agree, however, that they're because what they're doing is they're not just expanding this; they're also adding uh, a third Venom movie. That was always going to happen. There was always at least going to be a third Venom movie, I am sure. Uh, but also, we are going to get uh, a new. S- this is my favorite part. Uh, this is a character so obscure that not only had I never heard of this character, but I had to like look up uh, like who he was. And it's a it's a <laughs> Sony movie announces El Muerto, uh, a Sony spinoff movie starring Bad Bunny, which uh, we we talk a lot about the concept of diversity. And, and believe it or not, diversity exists in more than just uh, black and white in Hollywood. There are whole groups of other people that could could do with representation too. And this is a fantastic example of how they could do this right. Uh, on the surface, this shouldn't work, but it's a hilarious concept. Uh, Bad Bunny is extremely popular uh, right now. Um, and he's a musician. I'm not sure if you... Yeah, he's a musician. Yeah. He's like a young person tiktok thing. Right? Yes, he's got I a... I am ro- 100 years old and identify as Boom. He had like a cameo in like the last uh, Fast and the Furious movie and he also is going to be featured in the upcoming upcoming Sony movie Bullet Train starring Brad Pitt. Uh, and this is basically a character named El Muerto is Juan Carlos Sanchez. He's like a Mexican Lucha Libre wrestler who wears a mask, kind of like Rey Mysterio does. Uh, and the funny thing is, Bad Bunny has professional wrestling experience. He's, That's hilarious. That's great. He, this is like, it's just right on. Like, it's like, if they're going to do these characters, these, I'd rather they do, uh, first of all, they're not race swapping uh, or tokenizing a character differently. They're using something original. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's such an obscure concept that I feel like that's a recipe for success where you're not going in there with, uh, it's, he's only been featured in like three issues. So well, I they, don't know if it's a recipe for success if Morbius just did yep, so poorly. Morbius has way more history than than this character does uh and, and more of a connection to uh, he's l- way less obscure le- i mean he's still obscure but not nearly as obscure as, as this character is and to me this is it's such an and not just about morbius is uh how well known he is but the concept of a wrestler turned superhero is hilarious to me and fits right in line with uh, a unique take on the storytelling if you're going to tell different stories i'd rather they be something different than the traditional uh, boring superhero origin story. Do you feel like because he's more obscure, he le- gives like the writers some structure, but not too much? Yeah, they're, they're like one of the reasons I always complain is that they take these stories that have uh, thousands of stories of canon and in material, and then they just throw it out the window so they can tell their story. Mm-hmm. When there's less canon material for them to ignore, mm-hmm. then you don't have it's that automatic bias against the writer for doing their own thing which is like i'm always like okay if you make new characters you don't have to worry about uh about bastardizing this character's canon but this is kind of the best of both worlds it it does exist it does exist within spider-man lore mm-hmm. but it's so obscure that the average person isn't going to know that they're just going to know that he has connections to spider-man because i'm sure sony will plaster that all over the advertising so that people know is spider-man even going to be part of the movie likely not it will likely be t- tangentially connected through like like hmm. they did with Morbius with like uh, posters in the background uh, I mean he could be involved but this would down the line we'll have to see where Spider-Man goes with um, his relationship with Marvel uh, he's allowed to be in the like, like the, basically Marvel leases him as far as I understand mm-hmm. like they don't own Spider-Man Sony Sony owns Spider-Man uh, and they're not going to give him back they're also making uh, a Craven the Hunter movie so all these characters that are uniquely connected more to spider-man than any other character that sony owns the rights to uh i I have more faith in something like this but this story just looks really interesting to me because it's it's so not typical in in this guy who is from what i understand i've heard i've mentioned i've talked to multiple people who know who this dude is because he makes music and he's very culturally relevant right now Mm -hmm. so it's kind of like at first my hesitation was like he's not really an actor but he he is. He's he's got his cameo he's roles coming out. He he was in Narcos, uh, well, like the last season of Narcos. Uh, and Marvel is unabashedly hiring people with no acting experience. Uh, the lady in playing Echo, uh, in, in, who played Echo in Hawkeye, uh, was not had. It was literally her first role 
uh, on that show. So they're not afraid to do that if they feel like they can pull it off. So we'll, we'll see where this goes. And I, I also saw that Venom 3, they, they talk about where they think Venom will go. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, whether we like it or not, these characters are bankable. Venom makes more money, has made more money, makes more money. So it, it made better money. The second Venom, I believe, if I recall, had a better overall box office than the first one. Somebody can, I might be wrong about that, but it's still beyond profitable mm -hmm. given the fact that it came out uh, during the end of COVID and still made money at a time when they said no movies were going to make money. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to say that it was more profitable than the first one. I could be wrong about that. So I'm going to, I'm going to walk that one back, but still more than enough money has been made to justify making a third one. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, like, what they should look to do in a lot of these franchises, like they're making Thor love and thunder right now, which is like the fourth Thor movie, but people love Chris Hemsworth mm -hmm. um, three. And then uh, maybe integrate those characters into like other characters, movies like give uh, Tom Hardy, his three venom movies, and then let him interact with uh, Craven the Hunter in his movie and with El Muerto in his movie. And if they ever do Sony specific Spider-Man movies, you know, they don't need to keep giving him solo movies, start using the name that that character built like they did with Iron Man. That's what they did with Robert Downey Jr. He had his three Iron Man movies, but had like a way more Marvel appearances because people know him as that character. Listening to you talk about this, it blows my mind the fact that studios are having the calculation where they're like, we can we can have seven different characters in development right now, plus the characters we have already established, plus the characters that just like come and go and interact in movies. Like, it's wild to me what a demand for superhero movies there are. I'm, I'm really, uh, I, I keep expecting it to start waning because like I'm sick to death of most of them. Because like, like I'm more, t more than I'm tired of constant sequels is the multiverse yep because shit. it's the laziest it's theory the it's... least possible effort mm. that you could put into making something it's the laziest it format yeah um i was watching a uh i was listening to a video a youtuber yesterday he talks about uh how woke all the cbs police dramas have become and he talks about how like he goes every time you want to explain something away you just say it's a task force and it explains like it doesn't explain why there's like a beat cop working <laughs> with the fbi he's like he's like all you have to say is like it's a task force yeah. in the dark web and that explains away like 90 like, percent of the no, that's, that's don't all. ask any follow-up questions <laughs> thank you he's like he's like now if you had a task force in investigating the dark web you could have like 30 series worth of shows anything and could happen anything could happen because it's lazy writing yeah i feel similarly about like the term like cartels like, yeah cartels means anything could happen because anyone could come from anywhere and be connected to anything yeah. <laughs> with this one like i i see what you're saying this is cool el muerto i like that they're bringing in a character they're not just race swapping and they're just they're they're yeah. using something that's canon developing something on their it's own. fun sounding too but i do stand by like it blows me away that this guy's being introduced morbius did badly venom's over here other guys over here i can't name them all because it's really not my like strong suit um th i mean Who that's like keep up that just, and, oh, just in this conversation i feel like to. we've referenced 12 future movies which means how often i mean you release these movies what once every two months every three months at depends most? on the studio S sony not so much. like but also don't but forget like, there's also like a, it's already like at least a three-year like projection of superhero movies mm -hmm. i cannot yeah. believe it. like I, I also saw this tiktok of this guy talking about how he wants to see movies about ordinary people who are just in the mcu yeah for literally no reason that and like so funny there was a tv show <laughs> there was a tv show that only lasted like a season it was it was about people who cleaned up after superhero yeah uh like it's like every time there's a battle for new york then you have the cleaning the, <laughs> i would love to watch who, that show yeah like or, or like you have pitched a couple times like we should have a show about like the insurance adjusters yeah. who have to go around and be like, he threw your car where? <laughs> that would uh, be hilarious. I there was, be so there was a movie called like Powerless Powers, or something yeah. with Vanessa Hudgens in it. And I think that did terribly. Yeah. But, but it's not like, I feel like you could do this. As, to like, me, it's just like, can we just not be in the MCU? Can we just like see a story about and these aren't, that's like, that could actually these happen aren't in real life. Brett's giving you these the aren't even shape. MCU movies. That's the other or thing. Like, that, just, what's the other one? Uh, this is Spider-Verse, which is Sony. Um, yes. Just, just all like verses multiverses, and, all just, verses. It is lazy. Can we just watch stories that 
could conceivably happen in the real world, maybe. That's why DC, that's what I, I think it's stupid that DC keeps trying <laughs> to do their own, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the actual, the multiverse was actually a concept that was developed, was designed by DC before Marvel ever used mm -hmm. it in the comics. And DC keeps trying to do their own version of an extended universe. I'm like, you guys have better villains anyways, just tell good individual stories. Yeah. Uh, and that's all you need to do. But that's not, you know, it's corporate synergy. They need branding across multi-platform. We haven't even mentioned Into the Spider-Verse, which is uh, animate, which is a uh, CGI animated Spider-Man Miles Morales there's, there's story. So there's much. so much. There's too but much. But the thing is, like, I am just, it's too much for me. I'm not into it. I respect that people are, it's, it's not a question of, like, me being against it. It's just not my thing. And mm -hmm. I feel like I'm so far behind that I'll never catch up at this point. Um, have you ever seen the movie Mallrats? Yes. The Kevin Smith movie? Yes. I... Oh, that was a fantastic movie. Yeah, and Thank you. what is that about? We'll have to watch it. It's about these guys who hang out at the mall, and it's like... It was, the, it was the 90s, okay? okay. <laughs> Amazing time. If you haven't seen Clerks or Mallrats, yes. you haven't okay, lived Okay, so yet. he made this movie called Clerks, which was great, and there's a couple others, and they're all part of Kevin Smith, the director's Askewniverse, <laughs> where, like, these characters will reference stuff that's happening, but in, like, really oblique ways. Uh, yeah, Jay and Silent Bob are referenced all over... They, yeah, they're these recurring characters, which... Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kevin Smith plays one of them. He's the director. They appear in all of the movies, and as far in, as I know. And in one of the Scream movies. Yeah, I mean, Scream it's 3. great. And they'll they'll be like, oh, they'll reference like this one girl who like drowned in a pool, which <laughs> sounds morbid, but it's like as if in their small town, everyone kind of knows about this one thing. And it'll like impact different characters and different movies in different ways, but they're all sort of talking about it. Hmm. And I actually think that kind of universe style of movie is actually very fun and very cool yeah. the movies really don't have anything to do with each other other than they're sort of in his kevin smith's wheelhouse and repertoire i think it's really fun the marvel way is so overproduced and it doesn't have that kind of quirky indie charm that like i like about that one i understand where like they've invested so much money in these characters you don't want to just retire them because you've already paid a lot of money for all of that. And when they're, and these actors are signing on for multi-contract deals, right? They're, I, they're basically locked down for a, a they long have, they period of time. They have to use it, but like it's just to me, like again, like we mentioned with the cop shows, it's like, oh well, because of the multiverse, because this thing, <laughs> they I could just pull them out of anywhere. It's like, a task it force. Have this sort of artful it's weaving that I would of like creativity everywhere. Yep. Yeah, it's a task force investigating the dark web. Uh, oh, I, the I, MCU. But li listen to this <laughs> that description. That guy's full of magic. At the, the one that. Benedict Cumberbatch plays, so anything could happen because he does weird stuff. Well, and they did that in stages where, like, they invent. First, it was, uh, it was, <laughs> first, it breath. was mutants, then it was inhumans, then it's magic. Yeah. So, but listen to this description and then we'll move on. It says El Muerto, aka Juan Carlos Sanchez, is a super powered Mexican luchador wrestler who wears a magical mask that has been passed down in his family. But Juan Carlos is reluctant and too scared to take part in the ritual involving having to fight El Dorado to prove his worth and courage for the mask. So El Dorado demands the life of Juan Carlos, but Juan Carlos's father intervenes only to get killed by El Dorado, who in turn, due to his father's journey, gives Juan Carlos an extra 10 years to train. Long story short, Juan Carlos eventually challenges Spider-Man to a wrestling match, and then it puts in parentheses, seriously, that happened, <laughs> uh, where the two wrestle, but Spider-Man accidentally sticks Juan Carlos with a stinger that knocks Juan Carlos out. At the hospital, El Dorado shows up and wants Juan Carlos dead, but Juan Carlos didn't successfully unmask Spider-Man which leads to a battle between Spidey and El Dorado. I think that sounds hilariously fascinating. I would watch that. Uh, it, it, I, but you would watch the Spider-Verse anyways because you like the Spider-Verse. Not really. I mean, I, I watch them because they're kind of interesting, but I the, the characters are very like, you know the story before you hear it. This is not a story I've ever heard before. Yeah, that's true. It, it seems more like a coming of age, uh, you know, rising to your uh, potential story than anything else. Uh, if, it could be all right it could be all right i i but appreciate that, that they are not tearing apart a character that exists and has canon and yes. has established mind. i do love what they're doing with that i think that's cool i think it's funny that they have this guy who's like trendy right now and also somehow connected to pro wrestling playing him like all good things i just you know i side with mary on this one like i'm a little bit overwhelmed and mm -hmm. over to over with the multiverse but the multiverse don't... is absolutely a concept that that is hilariously like tur turned us a, a, like a batch of lazy writers that use it as a crutch for sure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Chris Pratt this would never happen in the nineties. <laughs> it wouldn't have. It would have been. Let's make Kevin Smith in charge of the multiverse from now on. No, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. yes. No, he yes. ruined. He ruined He Man. So we're mm, we're not doing I that. Do 
Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.